Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing fantastically well on this pretty decent British day. It's slightly sunny where I am. How is it where you are? I know some of you are from America, Australia, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Myanmar, Indonesia, everywhere. <laughs> so, yeah, a shout out to all of you guys. I know there's a hell of a lot of you guys as well who aren't on this on this time zone that we're sort of uh we're, we're putting all the videos out on so i know it can be struggle it can be a struggle for you guys to see the videos so shout out to all of you watching and everybody in general as well yeah it's uh it's a good day all around make sure you're liking commenting and subscribing i have to say this we've got more stuff coming out but your one leads merch is also available link in the description below everybody we've partnered with back for well worth it for all your summer garments all your Leeds united summer garments make sure you check that out people loving it so far i have to say so yeah uh keep getting your comments in everybody we're gonna uh go into just a couple of things that you know i like to look back on the game you know and watch the game back reevaluate recalibrate thoughts and stuff like that and I want to get into some pointers that I took away from yesterday as well. We're going to get into the promotion picture as well, where the teams are looking ahead of Monday's fixture. Obviously, the Easter weekend is he's sort of living up to the bill, really. Leeds dropping points. <laughs> and yeah, listen, I hate Easter weekend so much. A lot of the time it is off the back of an international break and we're going to get into that. But let's start off with the big contextualization of what happened yesterday. You can't win every single game in the championship. We all know that it is utterly impossible. The division, in my opinion, competition wise, is the toughest division in world football. Anybody on their day can beat anybody. It, it, it just is what it is. And, and it's you can't put an accumulator on championship football because it'll screw you up. You'll never get a 10, 11-fold correct or a 5, 6-fold correct. Or if you do get it correct, shout out to you. But it is extremely rare because it's so unpredictable that you will get a result right. It is just always down to the wire. Blackburn could have beaten Ipswich 3-1 yesterday and you wouldn't have really gone, bloody hell. You just gone, yep, yeah, well, that's the championship. So it was a little bit surprising, Lee's conceding the two goals, but ultimately it was a Watford side who are, I think, in a false position. I, I look at that team and I did my start of the season predictions when Ishmael was there and I really when you looked at what they had on the pitch, I wanted Leeds United to go out and sign Yasser, Yasser Espria at the start of the season. I absolutely love him. I think he's a quality young player. And he's in their arsenal all the time. He's got uh, a combined 11 goal contributions uh, this season and he's looking dangerous all of a sudden. Tom Cleverley's come in. There's going to be an immediate reaction when it comes to a manager. We had Dodds come in at Sunderland. If you remember when Mowbray left, Dodds came in, got a result against Leeds United. It seems caretaker managers are a nightmare for LUFC. So, yeah, he came in. I almost thought immediately when you see Cleverly there and, and they're really bigging him up on Sky Sports saying, you know, it's a real introduction to management coming up against the mighty Leeds United and you're thinking, oh, here we go. The story's written here. So I think there has got to be a lot of credit given to Watford yesterday. They started well. They went man for man. They were 3-5-2. Uh, in, in in many situations, I don't think for 60 minutes we tested their defenders, whatever. I thought Porteous and Co were were relatively untroubled, tr untroubled at the back, I should say. So it was a it was a relatively easy day for about 60, 65 minutes. And Tom Cleverley reflected on that in his post-match thoughts. He said, look, for 65 minutes, we're the better team. And um, he, he felt they were the better team on the night as well. And it's hard to argue against that, really. The last 30 minutes, Leeds started controlling. We looked a little bit more like ourselves. But for the large majority of it, I always talk about it being a little bit like a boxing match. And on points, Watford were winning that game. So, you know, Yasser Espria, Emmanuel Dennis, who, listen, at this level is always going to be quality. A change Leeds United side. We were all massively frustrated by the end of last night because the opportunity was there. The opportunity was there for Leeds United to really extend their lead. Leicester had lost. Southampton had drawn. You know, Ipswich had won, albeit it was a narrow win. And Blackburn were right in the game. You needed Leeds to just win that game. And it's like, yeah, we're the authority here. You know, we're the generals. You're, you're going to sort of abide by our tune. You're going to play to our tune, our rhythm. And, and we weren't able to do that. But Watford, last game of the day. Sky Sports, a battered Leeds United side, and in all, all in all, it's not a bad result at all. Um, 
So getting into some of the, the fine tunings of the game, and we're going to then get into some of your comments, everybody. We had six players in training over the international break. I hate this international break. Nobody cares about it. Nobody's interested. The only complexion, the only, you know, if we're, if we're bringing this back game, which made any difference was that Welsh game. Nobody cares about the England game. I know the US had a couple of games and we've got, you know, US fans, obviously the CONCACAF final against Mexico. Okay, fair enough, the importance. But from an English perspective, it is absolute tripe. I cannot stand it. And when you're going away for two weeks, it was quite nice, actually, because you thought Leeds do need a little bit of rest. I thought for the last month it's been, we've not been at our very best. You've seen players like Chris Somerville, Jorginho Rutter, I think, look tired. So the break was a necessity. It needed to happen. But on the back of it, when Watford had six players who were away with international duty and we had six players at training, that context played out last night. And you saw it, No, not only was it systematic problems, which we're going to get into in this video, but also it was the fact that the players evidently weren't fine-tuned with each other. And they should be. They should be almost in the flow state at this part, part of the season. But two weeks of training that, has, that have been missed, players coming back late, players coming back with niggles and injuries and, and maybe mentally shot a little bit when you look at someone like Dan James who's crying after his missed penalty. It's a lot to take in after an international break. And it's a lot to take in as well because we're the last team to play on a Friday night on a Sky Sports production. So it was a lot. It was a lot. And I think that's something that we need to take into consideration. Um, just going to get into a few of your comments. Uh, there can't have been many seasons where almost every game is a must win for us. Yeah, I get what you mean, mate. You're completely right. Just got back from a dog walk and almost got a suntan belt over day. I'll have to get out there, mate. I'll have to get out there. Um, Jack says, uh, Connor, uh, what's your honest opinion on their first goal? I haven't seen your review. you got to check it out, Jack. Uh, but the amount of stick Liam is getting is ridiculous. Anyone, If anyone is at fault, it's Sam. Um, Norwich got a big say in the top two, says Jake. ITFC, I agree with you, mate. Uh, you're right about Cooper, just can't trust him for one game. Let's let's get into it. Um, we spoke about it last night. If you've not checked the review, it was a really honest depiction from me about what I think. Um Please go check that out if you haven't after this video. It's well worth it. It's a 40-minute thing, which you might get a little bit more from when it comes to the review of the game yesterday. I'm going to try to speak about the other teams. I'm going to try to speak about things that we learned about yesterday, but not go as in much depth. So, Cooper. I'm hoping he doesn't double down and start him against Hull. That would be nuts to me. Um, and I think he's probably learned that after yesterday. It just gets me a little bit worried after last time when he started him against Watford, won the game 3-0, and then he decided to keep Rodon out when he was fit and start Liam Cooper in the Southampton game, of which he got torn apart. I always talk on this channel about partnerships and cohesion, right? Synergy. Almost friendships in the back line. Ampadu and Rodon are completely unique because the best mates off the pitch and the best mates on the pitch, you can tell. So how they work together in tandem is really, really good because what one does is drop off. Rodon, he's a brilliant sweeper. We've seen that all season. And yesterday, he showed it twice. Liam Cooper made a, a sort of a mishap with a pass where he it hit his instep of his foot and it went straight to, I believe it was Emmanuel Dennis, who played Yasser Espria in. And Rodon was there to cover and pass it back to Ilan Mele. That was one instance. The other instance was when, I believe it was uh, Boyer or Bayer went through on goal and Joe Rodon made an absolutely unbelievable challenge. That is the role of a sweeper in that back two. There's one defender normally who's productive, proactive, and comes forward. We've spoken before about Pascal Strout being that guy. And Joe Rodon is uh, basically a profile of a very, very good sweeper at this level. And I think in general, he can develop in the Premier League. The issue with Liam Cooper is you have to have success in one of the defenders coming out and winning that ball. So we saw against Southampton earlier on in the season, he was really struggling, coming forward. Adam Armstrong was getting into those pockets, but he was also drifting out wide. Liam Cooper was finding it really difficult to get into that pocket and get in front of Adam Armstrong. The same thing was happen happening continuously yesterday with Emmanuel Dennis. Emmanuel Dennis was dropping off, but also he was getting in behind. He was doing a dual role of a striker, which is very complete from him. I think he's very decent at this level. And Cooper didn't know what to do. And when he was trying to follow him, outside of that D, he was getting dragged into it and he was never getting to that ball. So his head knew what he wanted to do, but he wasn't able to do it, okay? And then the aspect that you you really rely on Liam Cooper for is the heading out. 
It's the he's he's very decent, I think, in the air for his height, for his attributes, his physicality, his athleticism, his age. I think he's very good at, at winning aerial duels, and that is the positive I would give to Liam Cooper. The issue is for that second goal in particular, he was in a really good point. He was behind his man, and then suddenly it rotated. The man beat him in the air, and when I say beat him in the air. I'm talking it was like an NBA basketball player has just absolutely biffed out a you know a, a, a sort of fan who's come on the pitch and tried to try to hang with an athlete. He absolutely physically mauled him in that duel. Cooper completely discombobulated, got up, staggered, started running back as slow as you like, really slow off the turn, put his hand up for offside. I don't know why he was doing that, then was beaten again twice before Dennis put the ball in the back and back of the net. You know. If you were to just look at levels and where a player isn't at it anymore, we've got so many fans who just sentiment FC and have always loved Liam Cooper and have backed Liam Cooper from day one. It doesn't matter about the performance. They will just back Liam Cooper for whatever reason. They just love him. So we, they're, 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 unfortunately, I am the big bad guy who takes off those glasses and in my opinion is able to just read the game, which I try without any bias. I think you guys, a lot of you are the exact same. We all like Liam Cooper. He's club captain. But from Derby County in the playoff semi-finals to Southampton to here, the, listen, he's always been ridden with mistakes. And as that proactive defender, he's never been quick enough. Never been quick enough. So there's always been questions there. There's always been mistakes there. And I think that's the issue with his game. Now, at 32, I think when he comes in for Leeds, he's looked like a 38-year-old. I think his speed shouldn't be what it is when he's 32. I think you get 32-year-old defenders who still look quick off the mark. He looks like he's a yard slower. And it's not an attack on the person. It's not an attack on the person. It is a look at his defensive capabilities. And when Ethan Ampadu is at the back, he is able to be that productive defender. Pascal Strout, when he's at the back, is able to be that proactive defender and step in, but step in with success. Now, the problem is, if you lose that duel, if Ethan... Or if Pascal loses that duel, you have to have the recovery speed to get back in there, which I think those two do. Liam Cooper, as we even saw yesterday, when he tried to be productive and win that physical duel, I mean, the turning speed was... I, I, I even thought he was quicker than that. I couldn't believe it. So, yeah, when we're talking about him, it's an analysis of the game. It's an analysis of where he's not at. And to come up against the Watford side, who are 14th in the division, albeit I do think it's a little bit of a false position, especially with that front three, Espria, uh, uh, Bayer, I think he was called Bayer, and uh, looking like Rafael Leal, by the way, and Emmanuel Dennis. As soon as I saw that, and I saw him and Byram at the back, I thought we're in trouble here. We're in big trouble here. Because we know, we know the script. So as everybody's saying in the comment section below, you're all completely right. It's not just down to Liam Cooper. We can throw Sam Byram in there 100%. We can talk about Elan Mele, but I, I'm I'm a big critic of Elan Mele, but he didn't do anything wrong last night. He, he, he did a little bit of a, a goal kick, which was bizarre, but and it, and it reached them, their man and they nearly scored or whatever. But nobody talks about Ethan Ampadu in midfield. It was terrible. Absolutely terrible. I love Ethan, but he was god-awful in that midfield. You know? So... We also need to hit people with the same sticks. And I think the, the, the problem is that Liam Cooper is when he makes mistakes, they're massive. The first goal is in the back of the net. Why is he in the back of the net? You know, Bayer's by himself. Liam Cooper is in the back of the net. Go towards the defender or to, to go towards the player, I should say. By him, nowhere to be seen. So I agree. It's not just Cooper. The problem is with Cooper, these mistakes become amplified because they look ridiculous. It's almost circus stuff. And that's the issue. Let's have a look at some of your comments, everybody. Keep getting them in. Uh, Paul Brunton, uh, sorry, mate. FIFA in there, uh, pointless international break is to blame. Cooper's form symptomatic of our troubles. Uh, what do we do if Nonto are actually out for three weeks? Huge worry. Um, Let's have a look. A couple more comments. <laughs> Gabo Jen. Connor, you're right with your tweet. Cooper should never play for Leeds again. Unfortunately, you shat it when you got called out for it. <laughs> Courage in your convictions. Courage in your convictions is true, mate. Do you know what it is, pal? Um, I live in the real world. And sometimes when you're in Twitter and it's this weird sort of echo chamber of people sort of self-importance, I just come out of it because I'm like, I can't be bothered with my phone pinging off every two minutes. 
I really can't be bothered with it. You know, I just get on with life. <laughs> so I just couldn't be bothered with it. There's still a Liam Cooper tweet out there that you can go and have a look at. It's absolutely out there. But yeah, people were getting the knickers in the twist with that one. So I, I thought I'd just get rid of it. I think first half yesterday, we could have uh, slate most players bar and road. And I agree with you, Jay. I really do. Um, was at the Brum game, a Birmingham, uh, Blackburn game yesterday. Watched after two Sky games as well. Don't think any of the three played well. Don't know how it looked on the cameras, but I think we we're awful uh, second half. Vardy's passed it, yeah, 100%. And that's it. Like, Cooper's in the same bracket, mate. I'm not comparing him and Vardy, but it is what it is. Right, let's get on to a few other bits before we get into the other clubs as well. Matteo Joseph, start him. Said it weeks ago, just start him. Why, why not? The, the glow-up that our team had when they realised that they could play the ball in behind with 10 minutes to go, the glow-up you saw on Junior Firpo's face, that he didn't have to just pass the ball continuously to our central midfield and Cree Somerville. He could play the ball. He could arch the ball behind the back line. It was unbelievable. And that is where Firpo was brilliant when he came on. He was expansive, he was wide, and he was able to play that ball in behind Porteous, in behind Pollock every single time. Why? Because Matteo Joseph is sharper, he's quicker, he's athletic. Why don't we start him? And this isn't because Bamford's had a bad game yesterday at all. I think ba Matt, um, Patrick Bamford's been good against Millwall. I think he's been good against Sheffield Wednesday. Loads of other teams. But why do we not give Matteo Joseph more minutes? He's in the place at the right time, as he was against Chelsea, because his hard work, his endeavour, he is... But then you'll like I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. You know the whole the whole complexion of the game turns when he comes on, and the whole argument of well, well, when he comes on, the defenders are tired. Well, also through a ninety minute game, if this kid is getting in behind the defense, he's willing to do so all the time, isn't just coming short for the ball and offering options just in that D. Leeds have got much more of a striking option to hit. He's physical. We know right now that if the ball's in the air, he's going to give up opponents problems. We know that. So that's a redundant argument. Who's quicker? Him. Who's sharper? Him. Who's more dynamic? Him. Who's more athletic? Him. Who's in a rich vein of form right now, scoring for Spain uh, under 21s, is in a really good field, scoring for Leeds last night. What's the downside to Matteo Joseph starting? Experience. Great. Okay. Okay. Well, then we can change it at half time. If he's having an absolute shocker, change him at half time. But the glow up Leeds United had when Junior Firpo was on the pitch and he was on the pitch was insane. And Junior Firpo has to take a lot of credit yesterday because I thought he was very, very good when he came on in terms of giving us that expansion, that width, but also looking forward. Our team was lateral, 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 lateral for many moments. But the reason they're lateral is because they've got no options. If you've got Joel Perot dropping deep, Pat Bamford dropping deep because he's not quick enough to get beyond those defenders on the last line, what do you do? You have to play a lateral. You have to give the ball to Chris Somerville and pray that something happens. You have to give the ball to Gigi Rutter. And if he's having a bad game, give it back to Chris Somerville and hope. And if they double and triple up on him, well, well, let's hope he can do some magic like he did for both goals yesterday. Matteo Joseph gives you a completely different dynamic in terms of running in behind. But we don't start him once again. This isn't, this isn't a, a, a Daniel Farker criticism, by the way. But the calls from you guys and from me to start him were laughed out the building after Chelsea. He's not experienced enough. What, what, what are we talking about here? He's not experienced enough. So what? Like, I just don't understand it. I don't see the downside to starting this kid. And it's not a bad trait on Bamford. It's not all, you know, this is what we have to do. We have to say this all the time. It's not a bad look on Bamford. There is more of an upside with Matteo Joseph right now. I don't see, someone tell me, someone tell me in the chat and we'll flag it up what Bamford gives above, jo above Joseph. Even when Bamford's on his A game, what does he give above Joseph? Because I think uh, Joseph on his A game is a more preferential selection than Bamford for me. I, I, I I, and that is not just because he scored yesterday. It's, obviously, it's marginally impacted by that because, you know, he scored again. But it's one of those where when he's on the pitch, if you're watching this game, if you're watching any game and you don't think we look so much sharper, and you don't think they have another option instead of just passing the ball side to side and giving it to Somerville with Joseph on the pitch. Maybe I'm watching a different game. I don't know. 
Uh, agree 100% uh, from when Joseph was in our 21s, he looked so much stronger and so much sharper. He has to start. Michael says, uh, Connor on Joseph, different tools needed for different jobs, tasks. Why isn't uh, why isn't any any learning? Yeah, Joseph was really good yesterday. Looks full of confidence, scored two against Chelsea and scored midweek on his international run for Spain. He has to be worth rolling the dice on him. I, yeah, I, I, I'm just... I'm just not, I, I don't understand what this, what this, uh, you know, Gabe was talking about it, to be fair to him. He was saying, you don't want to change too much. And whilst I get that, if players are giving you more of an upside than other individuals, it's just start him. I, 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 do you know what I look at as well? I bet Gelhart's fuming at the minute. Thought Perot was decent yesterday, but you're telling me Perot in the number 10 can't give what? Gelhart can give up points or Gelhart can do can't do anything in this side whatsoever that just gets him on the pitch you know we know in that number 10 role if Gelhart is to be there in certain games his ball striking ability his low center of gravity you had the lads doing a Leeds United five-a-side team rating the other day and talking about certain personnel they're all still raving about Joffy Gelhart and he's not even getting on the pitch and this isn't once again just because of a 2-2 thing this is because can Gelhart come on and give you a little bit more of an upside in that number 10 than a Joel Perot probably probably but we never see it um but yeah, I think a lot, a lot of what we're speaking about as well, you know, when we when we look at Joe Rodon is uh, it, Joe Rodon and and and, and Ampadu together is they've got a cohesiveness that they, they work together. And I think we've got to see that. So let's have a quick look at some of the opponents as well. So Ipswich yesterday getting a one nil one nil win at Blackburn. I thought it was really good. We've used a lot of sofa score as well, everybody. To, to sort of look at the the XG, to sort of look at where Ipswich's momentum was. You can download that. The link in the, is in the description uh, below. Let me just blow this up a little bit uh, when it comes to yesterday. D -d -d -d, Ipswich Town. I did have this up a second ago, but for some reason it's just gone off. But there you go. Uh, so Ipswich, obviously top of the league there. Yeah, and we can just see, like, you know, with regards to their goals, uh, you know, straight straight up there with 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 goal difference. Leeds is is still far superior, um, and and we can see as well that you know when you, when you just click on Ipswich here, and then you look at uh, this recent game that they've had, obviously against Blackburn. The lineup, I think we thought it was going to be a little bit. I didn't think it was going to be this strong. Finish one nil, obviously, but it was. Kiefer Moore, who was a little bit of a doubt, came in. Chaplin's obviously a massive difference. Amari Hutchinson's on fire at this moment in time. Nathan Broadhead was on there as well. Interesting, Luongo was in, and, and Lewis Travers wasn't. I didn't know if this was to do a little bit with, you know, with with uh, injury. But once again, Ipswich just getting through. Just getting through. Um, total shots, you can see they exceeded Blackburn there, but three to three. And as Jake said there, you know, look at that nine corner kicks to Blackburn there. You thought that have may maybe made a couple of, of, of chances there. Offsides, you know, Ipswich holding a really good line there. Big chances. Look, Blackburn having won. Big chances missed. Blackburn again. So all in all, once again, they've got through it, Ipswich again. And you've got to say, when you look at this run, they've done exceptionally well. They're on the same sort of trajectory as Leeds United. And this is a massive game. It is a huge game. Uh, Southampton, at this moment in time, are faltering a little bit. I think that's pretty obvious right now in fourth. And we said there was going to be a team that fell off. You know, Leeds didn't get maximum points as well. But when you do look at, you know, that game yesterday for Southampton, it, it you know, it's a it's it's not a good a good look, you know, they've caught, you can get the momentum bar here on everybody as well. And so for score, it was very 50, 50 with Ipswich and, um, Ipswich and Blackburn. But yeah, if we just have a look now at their, at their sort of, their record now, it's not great. Is it? It's not great. It's a draw. It's a win. It's a win. It's a loss. It's a loss. It's a win. You know, Borough's form's actually better to be quite honest with you. Um, and, and yeah, I think, it seems like they're struggling a little bit. It does seem like they're struggling a little bit. You look at a few of the statistics as well. Expected goals. I mean, look at that. I mean, I cannot believe that. That is that is appalling. And if you're a Southampton fan, you've got to be absolutely gutted. And they completely dominated the game. And listen, we know what happened with Leicester as well. We know what happened with Leicester in their game. And Leicester are in a little bit of a funk at the minute. But the, the, what they'll see as a benefit to them yesterday is the fact that 
they created a lot of chances. Jamie Vardy, I mean, I've no idea what he's doing. Uh, <laughs> he had to put some of those chances away, but Leicester fans are not happy with Enzo Moresco. Obviously, they've squandered that league, that lead, I should say, and it's not just the Leeds United, everybody. It's to, you know, it is to Ipswich as well and Southampton, but some big games coming. Hull leads, Leeds Hull, I should say. Leicester Norwich is a horrible game for Leicester. It is right now. And then Ipswich Southampton, my predictions, I think Ipswich are going to beat Southampton. I think, you know, they've got enough players there ready and I think that is going to eliminate Southampton from this race. Now, that is to say that Leeds don't lose because if Leeds don't lose, then you hope... Leeds have got... I think Leeds now have got to pick up maximum points. You, you don't want to be going into a scenario with Ipswich right now. You know, Leicester do have that game in hand, but I don't want to be going into a situation with Ipswich right now where, you know, we drop more points and then Ipswich get another win. You don't want to see that. They're already a point ahead. You don't want that extending where Leeds can't bring that back with our goal difference and with three points if they were to lose and it was a swing because there's opportunities now. You know, we don't want this to extend where they beat Southampton, hypothetically. We drop points against Hull City and even if they were to lose against Norwich and we were to win against whoever we're playing um, in, a, in, that, in that calendar game week, we then can't you know, go above them. You don't want that to be a case because Ipswich are very consistent generally. That might just be a little bit of an outlier, but you're probably looking at it now and we sort of weirdly need Southampton to win. But it depends what we all want. You know, are we just wanting top two as a fan base or are we wanting that title? You know, I don't care about the title. I just want top two. And I think in this, how competitive it is right now, you've, you've, you've got to, you know, we've got to just get that top two. We've got to get that top two. The problem is right now is South, Leicester have that game in hand where they can just go above Leeds. Um, and I believe they can go above uh, Ipswich as well. And that obviously forces Leeds into third position. So it's not in our hands anymore. It's in Leicester's hands and Ipswich's hands. Before the, before the game yesterday, it was in Leeds' hands. So that's something we need to look at. But Hull's going to be tough. I keep mentioning this. I keep mentioning this a lot. And, you know, we keep discussing... How Leeds, you know, how Southampton and Ipswich and Leicester and, and all this sort of stuff, you know, they've got to be, you know, they've got to be losing points, winning games, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it having a little bit of a swing. Other teams have got to be winning games against them. But right now, right now, we need to beat Hull. We need to look at ourselves. We've got Coventry then next away from home, which is not going to be easy at all. These are very two very, very tough games. Two teams that can make the top six and are fighting for the top six. You know, Hull, who are a big, big problem at the minute. Coventry, who are a big, big problem. I watched them against Wolves in that semi-final and they were brilliant. Absolutely brilliant and deserved it against a strong Wolves side away from home. So this isn't going to be an easy task. We need to be firing Nonso. It doesn't look like he's going to be available for this one. Uh, sorry, guys. I believe my camera's just been knocked off there, which is good. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Hold on. We'll be back soon. There we go. Uh, that's not that's not what we wanted. Hold on, <laughs> I've just I've just kicked the camera, everybody. So apologize apologies for that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we we need to. It's 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 going to be a tough game, you know. And it looks like Nonso's not going to be available. Gruev, it looks like he could be available, but Nonso's a big problem. It is, you know, you got a player who's in form come back and you think to yourself, here we go. And then he gets injured on international break. I can't stand this international break. I hate international breaks. So yeah, we've got to be careful there. But yeah, keep getting your comments in. Uh, agreed. I do trust your word. Hull's form at the minute is rubbish though. At home, I think we beat them comfortably 2-0. Yeah, you could be right, mate. I think Leeds is the only team that can get seven wins of eight. Not sure the rest can do. That's a good point. Stoke battered them. Yep. Saints will get something from Ipswich. I hope you're right. Um... Jake said, we beat Southampton, lose to Norwich. We haven't beat them in 15 years. Ipswich are the Karens. Jay says, as well, be interested to see how many players are wearing in such a shoot for the teams in the top four. I bet Leeds, Leicester, Southampton, all the drop points. All have more than it. I guess that's the calibre of team though, isn't it? Jay, you know, we've got, we are, all three of us have better squads than Ipswich, let's be honest, when it comes to calibre and quality, but they're top of the league, which is an unbelievable job right now by Kieran McKenney. You've got to say that. Um, but guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, let me know in the comment section below what style of video you like to do next. We've kind of combined this with three things we learned. And um, yeah, keep letting me know what you think in the comment section. But if you want to become a YouTube member to support the channel, you can do so. Also, 
We have got one Leeds fan channel merch. Link in the description below. Well worth it. Get your t-shirts, your hoodies, everything else. And uh, guys, I really appreciate your support once again. We've got videos out on Patreon from last night and we will have them out this week as well. It's been an absolute pleasure. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe, everybody. And we will see you on the other side. Cheers. Cheers.